financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic, a little bit different, business legal issues. Jenny Wingo. Hi, Ken. Good to be here. Jeffrey Linden. Good morning, Ken. Brian Small. You must be Ken Thank you last Gross. week for giving me an Academy Award, by we, the way. We still have it here. We yeah. do. I don't deserve it yet. It's Ken's. Not really. Um, we're uh, talking about a little bit different topic. Okay? Uh, things, things that you need to know and don't know relating to business issues. Things that I see come up all the time. First topic I want to talk about are employment agreements. Ish, and here's the thing. The issues that exist and the discussion that we're going to have apply if you're the employer or you're the employee. They just apply in opposite fashion. Someone will come up to me and say, I have an employment contract. Will you review it? There's a covenant not to compete. The question there is, first of all, the question is, is that enforceable? Is a covenant not to compete enforceable? Well, can, can I ask a question even before we get into that? Yeah. You're talking about employment agreements. From my understanding, Michigan, we don't really have employment agreements very often. We are an at-will state. Isn't that correct? Why? What would be the need to have an employment agreement from an employee standpoint, not an employer standpoint? Is it ever necessary? From an employee standpoint, only if you're a professional mm -hmm. or you're a high level management level employee and you want to contract for certain benefits, stock options, bonuses on your compensation based upon your productivity, um, benefits, that's where you would need it in an agreement. When we say it's an at will state, what it means is if there is no written employment agreement, the employer has the right to terminate you for any reason at any time without cause, and you have the right to quit at any time for any reason without cause. Sometimes the employee, sometimes an employee wants an agreement that limits the employer's right to terminate. That's a negotiated thing. Employers typically want to reserve the right to be able to terminate any time, but it depends. You do need, your most common scenario where you'll see an employment agreement is someone higher up the chain, either a professional, a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, a PA, an engineer, a designer, an architect, uh, high level management in a company, and there the employer wants a covenant not to compete and confidentiality provisions in the agreement to protect the employer. What the employee wants is protections as well from the standpoint of bonus, benefits, and so forth. And also there's insurance issues. Suppose you're working as a do young doctor or a, a, young, a nurse or a physician assistant. You want to make sure you have malpractice insurance coverage. You're a professional. You may think that you're not liable for your own acts, but you are. If you commit malpractice and a person is injured, they sue not only the hospital, that they sue the doctor that's supervising you, they'll also sue you. So you need, you need protection there. So there are issues. Two other areas that come up most often are sales jobs. Um, sales jobs, employers will often require salesmen or even other people working in the, in the company that does sales to sign non-competes to protect their client base and things like that. Now what like exactly, that. when you sign the non-compete, are you agreeing not to do? Depending on the language, you're basically agreeing not to typically um, encourage your current employer's staff to leave with you and go work for yourself or another company in a competing business, take a job with similar duties in the same territory or region as your employer, 
or sell or do the same things that would act in some definition of competition with your current employer? It's a, it's a, it's a non-compete. And there's also, there's three components that you'll see in the agreement. You'll see a non-compete provision, you'll see a non-solicitation provision, right. and you'll see a confidentiality provision. It says you're going to preserve the employer's trade secrets and confidential information. And you'll see enforcement provisions. It says if you violate the terms of, the covenant will say, while employed and for a period of X years, two years, three years, sometimes five years after leaving the employment, you will not compete or solicit the business of the employer within a radius of X miles or any existing clients. The issues in those covenants not to compete as to whether they're enforceable is, are they reasonable? Right. And the reasonable comes back to how long are they and what is the scope? Like you can't, if you're working in a small restaurant, you can't have a covenant not to compete that says you won't work in a restaurant in California. That would be ridiculous. But what an employer will do when they draft the covenant, they'll make it as wide as they want, but they'll say if the court thinks it's unreasonable, it then is reduced to whatever level the court deems to be appropriate. But the biggest one that I always see is this. Jerry, the bartender, says to my client, oh, covenants not to compete aren't enforceable. You can't stop someone from the right to work. And the person comes in and they'll call me up or they'll call Brian, they'll call Jeff, and they'll say, well, I, they, they wanted me to sign a covenant not to compete. It's not enforceable, is it? The answer is yeah. probably yes, unless you get a judge that says no. The rule in Michigan is they are enforceable. Now, an interesting quick story before we go to the break. I think before 1983, if I've got the right year, in Michigan, in an employment context, covenants not to compete were not enforceable. I used to teach a business law course for a CPA review course at the time. And what I'd say to the class is, if your employer gives you a covenant not to compete, it's not enforceable in Michigan. Instead of saying it's not enforceable, say to them, if I've got to sign this covenant not to compete, you've got to give me more money. And then they would say, that then the theory being they give them more money, the covenant not to compete is not enforceable anyway. But that went away because the legislature changed, the Michigan law changed, and covenants not to compete now are enforceable. And they're important issues. So the question is, what do you do about it if you're the employee? What do you do about it if you're the employer? Do you just take the, what people make the mistake of doing is the employer hands you the document and you think you have to sign it. You don't. You can negotiate. When we come back from the break, we'll hit the key points to negotiate on. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Will I outlive my money? Medicaid is so confusing. A will, or do I need a trust? What if mom needs to go in a nursing home? At Samasco Law, we have the answers to all of these questions. Our attorneys will eliminate the confusion and develop a plan that's right for you. We are dedicated to veterans' benefits, assisted living, and nursing home care. Samasco Law can help prepare you for a long future. Call Samasco Law today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, Dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. 
When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Okay, we're back. All right, so the covenant not to compete, what do you do about it? I see this all the time from both perspectives. I'll represent the employer, and I'll be the one that drafts the employment agreement and includes the covenant not to compete. The thing that I'll say to the employer is, do you want it to apply if the employee is fired by you without cause? If you let them go, are they still bound by the covenant? Or do you want the covenant to only apply if the employee is the one that voluntarily quits or you fire the employee with cause? Some clients will say, no, make it apply always. Some clients will say, no, if we let the person go, we won't make the covenant enforced. And then other ones will say to me, make it as far as, as in, in wide as you can, and then if they object, we'll negotiate. So the point is, there is a negotiation. Whenever you're faced with a covenant not to compete, your job as the employee, and my job if I'm your lawyer, is to go back to the employer and say, listen, we want to narrow the scope of this covenant. We understand your concerns, but we have concerns as well. We want to make sure that, and, and, and here are the issues. First thing is, if you're working in sales, you could have a non-compete that takes you out of the industry, say in the state of Michigan, or you could just have a non-solicitation that says, I will not contact or seek the business or accept any business from any existing client of the company after I leave. I see that quite often in insurance brokers that change companies. Like you were, you were a, uh, a captive agent at one company and you decide to go be uh, a, a multi-line agent. When you leave your, from being a captive agent at your previous company, they make you, your non-compete is generally a year. You can't go solicit your prior clients, yes, but you can go sell insurance. But that's I think a far more, that's a, by far and away, a more fair outcome if you can get there. What are you no, say, what Jenny? I was going to say is, now is that typically would limit to a year? What is the time frame that, that it would be I would enforced? say one to three. What would you say, Jeff? And typically, the way the case law has come down, anything under two years is usually safe. Anything over two years starts to get looked at. And it all depends on the circumstances of the employer, the industry, the employee, and the marketplace that it's being implied in. But generally, anything under two years most likely is going to get enforced. The other thing is employment contexts have covenants not to compete. You also see them when you sell your business. When you sell your business, you're selling the goodwill of the business, so the buyer wants assurance that you're not going to go and compete against them after he just bought your business. Covenants in that context can be longer and wider in scope because they're protecting the goodwill that has been sold to the buyer in that circumstance. By example, you, I represented a pharmacy that the pharmacist sold his pharmacy and his client list and he got money for the, for the sale of the business and he got money for the non-compete portion and he was restricted for five years from opening up a pharmacy within a hundred miles. Uh, because he had right. a very large pharmacy. Another issue that came up uh, with a client of mine once was in the medical sales industry, medical supplies and things like that. This particular salesman was an experienced salesman and had his own contacts that he was free to use. He hired into a larger company. They had him sign a non-compete. He didn't think about it. What he effectively did by the terms of their non-compete was he converted his Being existing with, client base to theirs. to theirs. And now he couldn't, if he left the job, contact the clients that he brought with him to the new company. See, the solution in that case, when you're in that scenario, is you go back to the employer and you say, listen, I have my own contacts and sources. I want to preserve them. And we create a schedule and we attach it to an agreement and it says, these sources are reserved to the employee and he can continue to solicit and accept business from them after termination. You have to get the employer to agree. But that's the thing, that's the mindset. When you go into that negotiation with the employer, if the agreement is unfair and the employer is unwilling to make it acceptable to you, your remedy is to walk and find another job. As soon as you commit 
in your mind, I have to have this job and I'm going to take whatever the employer throws at me, you've lost the ability to negotiate. In any negotiation, the key to the success is being able to willing, is the willingness to walk away from the table. If you're willing to walk away, then you're willing to test the other party's uh, determination on the particular issue. The employer that's offering you the job is not offering you the job because you're the next person in line. They're offering you the job because they want you. It's a difficult market right now to find good help. You have negotiating power. You have to use it in that circumstance. Now, if the employee does leave and the employer wants to seek to enforce the covenant not to compete, what type of, is it damages? Are they trying to get money damages? Are they trying to get you out of the employment? The agreement's going to say they're entitled to money damages and typically injunctive relief. What will happen, was, well, the employer will send a notice and demand to cease and desist if the employee is violating the covenant and they'll threaten if you don't immediately cease and desist they file a lawsuit seeking an injunction from the court that prohibits you from doing the conduct that you're doing which would be working the new job for the new employer the new employer doesn't like that either because the new employer often gets named into that lawsuit right. on an interference claim and that then endangers your relationship with the new employer because they're going to incur expense. You need to vet those things carefully as you switch jobs. But don't think you're without any tools or ability to do so. You have them. You just have to be smart enough to use them. And, 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 and you don't want to negotiate that yourself because it creates acrimony between you and your future employer. What you want to do is you hire the attorney, the attorney becomes the bad guy pushing, asking the employer for as much as you can. You just say, I'm relying on my attorney. That way you get the most that you can get out of the deal. Now another issue in employment context, particularly with professionals, professional liability insurance. You need malpractice coverage. This is an area that people do not understand. There are two types of professional liability coverage. I'm going to explain them to you as soon as we come back from the break. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Nothing provokes panic and fear like the threat of a school shooting. Unfortunately, we've seen a sharp increase in students making copycat threats in order to gain notoriety. I'm Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith. Students, this behavior will not be tolerated. Felony charges will be brought against anyone who threatens the safety of our schools. Parents, please talk to your children and pass along this message. If you threaten our schools, it will cost you your future. Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers, listen to us Tuesdays, 11.30 a.m., Saturdays, 7 a.m. for Law & Reality Live on Praise 102.7. Also, be sure and sign up for our monthly contest, free $50 Visa gift card, Law & Reality hat, and copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Just go to the website, fill out the form, and once a month we pick a winner and then send out, send out the package to you. We've got a couple seminars coming up on Wednesday, July 11th, 6 to 7.30 p.m. 
An estate plan avoids costly fireworks. We're going to go through all the elements of an estate plan, documents that you need while you're living, how to avoid probate, handling a probate fight when it happens. Attendees get a $300 gold certificate off the cost of any estate plan. You want to sign up at thavgross.com, lawandreality.com, or call 888-235-HELP. Then on Wednesday, August 1st, 6 to 7.30 p.m., we have a seminar on elimination of debt called Debt Free Is Me. We're going to go through all the methods that we use to preserve future income for savings so that you have something to retire with. Debt elimination is the key part of the process. You want to eliminate the debt so you start saving the money. Jeff Kirshner will join us for a special segment addressing disability. Attendees get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt, and then sign up the same way, thabgross.com, lawandreality.com, or call 888-235-HELP. Also, remember, you can always come in to Thav Gross for a free consultation. Meet with Pat Samasco on elder law issues, Brian on debt, estate planning issues, Jenny Lingo with tax issues, business issues with me. Just call 888-235-HELP or go online on our websites and sign up. Also, check out free reports on the websites, How to Save Your Home from Foreclosure, Retiree's Guide to Social Security by Pat Samasco, and Business Formation and Loans and Grants for Small Businesses. I want to thank our sponsors, Stav Gross, Samasco Law. Now back to the show. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. All right, we're back. So insurance, how it comes into play. You're a young doctor. You're a lawyer. You're an architect. You're a professional. You're a nurse. You're a physician assistant. You need to have malpractice coverage provided by your employer in the job. Two types of malpractice coverage. Occurrence coverage and claims made. The common one is claims made. That only provides you insurance if the claim is made during the term of the policy, which would be during the term of your employment, as a result of actions committed by you during the term of the policy or employment. So if you committed malpractice in June and you left your employment in July and then the lawsuit was filed against you in September, the employer gets sued, you get sued, on a claims made policy you do not have coverage because the claim is being asserted against you after the time you've left your employment. Occurrence coverage covers you on any claims asserted against you for which the event occurred while you were employed. Occurrence coverage is far better. But the common one in every agreement nowadays, particularly in Michigan, is typically claims made. If you have claims made insurance, the only way to protect yourself after you leave is you have to either purchase a tail, which is giving you insurance coverage for any actions you committed while employed, even if the claims are asserted after you leave. But a tail is expensive and the employer does not have to pay for it unless the contract provides for it. Your only other alternative, if you can't get a tail or you don't want to buy one, is when you take the next job. 
you have to have your employer who's issuing you, again, claims made coverage, give you a prior act endorsement that relates back to your previous employment period, then you would be covered under your current employer's claims made policy for claims that arose prior to your employment. And there's an extra fee for that, but it's a lot less than the cost of a tail. So how you negotiate that with the employer is, the new employer is you ask for it. If they say no, then you say, I'll pay the difference in the cost if you have to, because it's going to be less costly than the tail. When you're applying for the new job, though, you want to negotiate for either occurrence coverage or that the employer will pay the cost of your tail if you separate from employment. Employers will oftentimes agree with that as long as they're not terminating you for cause, but it's a negotiation process. I would say this is the thing that is overlooked most often by professionals because they don't understand the difference between claims made coverage and occurrence coverage and they never inquire about it and it's a big issue. There's another topic I want to talk about is a business issue that is another it's a big issue we don't have a lot of time on it but business leases. You're going in and you're starting a new business or you're moving your location and you're signing a lease. I can't tell you how many people think the landlord hands you a, a 12 or 25 page document in 10 or 11 point font and people just sign the bottom line thinking it's a form document and that all leases are the same and they look and make sure that the rent is what was negotiated. That is a fatal mistake. Leases have a million issues. They'll say it's a gross lease and you're thinking you only have to pay the rent every month and then you read the lease and you have to pay the CAM charges, you have to pay the increase in any taxes, you have to pay all these additional charges. You need to read that document very carefully. You need to negotiate it. In a business lease, the biggest issue you have to watch for are maintenance issues. Suppose the HVAC goes out. Suppose there's an electrical problem. Are you as the tenant responsible or as the landlord? Suppose the air conditioner goes out two weeks before your lease term is up. You want to spend $4,000 for a new air conditioning unit when two weeks after your lease is up? If you, don't re if you don't negotiate that in the lease, you're going to find you're going to be on the hook for those kind of expenses. We'll take another show and develop leases more thoroughly because it's a great topic and it's another one where people overlook important issues. But you know, for now, I kind of want to leave it there. Summary. You need to watch out for yourself. You can't allow and believe that the employer's agreement is just a form that you always have to sign. You can't believe the lease is just a form you have to sign. There's room to negotiate. It's up to you to take the task to do it. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.